Hey friends! Now, uh, yesterday I watched a couple of videos on silk screening and I think I identified a few very large things I was doing incorrectly. Today we're going to try uh, to do it the way that uh, the, guy, the speedball guy taught me to do it. I'm hoping this works. I'm not going to get too into it until it's uh, successful. But if it's successful, I'll tell you everything I did to make it turn out just right. I've got my new screen here. I've got two of these, and they're dry and they're ready to go. And there is a bug on my screen. Like I said, if everything goes well, I'll explain everything I'm doing right now. I just don't know if I can deal with all that disappointment. See you in eight minutes. We're coming to the end of our recommended eight minutes exposure time. Now it's time to rinse this off. Oh, I'm excited. I see my image. It worked. Okay, friends. I am going to put together all the things that I've learned over the past week and all the mistakes I've made and uh, I'm going to explain to the best of my ability how to make a successful silk screen uh, without the making the actual screen part. I'm going to explain all the places I went wrong. Number one, I went wrong with the emulsion. If you buy one of these speedball sets, uh, it comes with this and it comes with this. This is a sensitizer that makes this uh, light sensitive. This is filled with just a little bit of this gel stuff at the bottom and it's difficult to see if you mixed it all. You got to make sure you mix it all because this will turn colors. It's like blue and then it'll turn like a winter greeny. Make sure you mix your emulsion correctly. If you don't do this step, none of this is going to work and you're going to get frustrated. That was mistake number one and I went through about that much of the emulsion before I realized this. Number two, when you're applying the emulsion to the screen, you just want it to fill the holes. You don't need big globs. It doesn't need to be thick. It'll be strong enough just filling the holes to do your prints. I had it too gloppy. Not only does it take it forever to dry, but it doesn't work as well. It doesn't work under the uh, recommended times or anything that they tell you to do. So I had a piece of uh, matting board it's it's just like a piece of cardboard or cardstock and as I was filling it in I made sure that once it was filled I'd flip it over and the stuff that came through I'd scrape it off and put it back in the container until I just had a nice very thin coat around the whole thing it doesn't need to be thick whammo so number two is make sure your emulsion isn't on too thick I did that wrong four times and also, you know, it's pricey. You want to hold on. To it. Number three, the correct way to expose it is not upside down like that. It's like this. Also, you want a piece of black paper and you put your screen down on the black paper. You put your image, which needs to be very, very black, directly against the screen. Some people tape it, I didn't, but it worked fine this time. And then you get a piece of glass that weighs down on it. Whammo! This is so no light can beam back up. The, the black will help the emulsion soak up all the light that's hitting it. There's no refractable light on the bottom. See, I was trying to do it this way, and that's wrong. Make sure your emulsion is touching the black paper so no light comes back. Make sure your image is snugly put against your emulsion. Make sure your glass is smushing it all together so there's no gaps so your image comes out perfect. I didn't do that part. Now I did. Number four, the whole purpose of this light here, the reason they give you depths there's a whole, uh, there's a list of the screen sizes and the depths you want to use. I didn't understand what that was. I thought it had something to do with heat. It does not. What it has to do with 
is the radius of the light using the most of it and hitting just the edge of the screen so you get everything concentrated on your image. I didn't know that. I didn't understand that part, but it was nicely conveyed by the nice man who works at Speedball uh, through the four uh, Speedball videos, uh, and that was great. See, if you have a bigger screen, you want to put this up higher so the radius of the light just reaches the end of your screen so you get maximum lightage. Uh, I have a 250 watt bulb. Very bright boy, probably uses a little bit of power, gets a little bit hot, but uh, it gets the work done quickly. Now, so that's it. Four, make sure your screen is adequately placed it's the correct distance from your light. Now, there's one last thing. What happens uh, when the light is hitting your emulsion, this is after it's been in a dark place to dry, every place the light is hardens. And the place where the light is not, uh, see, your design, does not harden. If you underexpose it, all the emulsion will not be hardened. If you overexpose it, the light could seep through your design and harden the places you don't want to harden. So don't underexpose, don't overexpose. There are lots of handy charts online. Uh, and uh, you can, you also get a chart when you get your speedball stuff. I only understood parts of these things. I guess I'm more of a visual learner. So once I saw all this stuff uh, done by the speedball guy, it all came back to me. I'll put a link underneath to those speedball videos. He explains it nicer. He's a nice fellow and he gave me all the, all the things I needed. All right, I need to let this guy dry. But uh, I have fun ideas for today. We're gonna do that next. All right, as you can see in this handy dandy fast motion video, I cut out my original films, which was probably, I don't know, it's not the best idea but I put it on a piece of cardboard and then I started to spray paint different colors to put my soap screen over. The registration isn't going to be perfect, but I don't want it to be perfect. I just want the image to be inside of the colors. And I think I can achieve that with this. If I was a brighter man, I would have used some kind of absolute uh, registration so I can just go plop, 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 be easy on myself and hold off on that type of thing for the future. I'm spying a little hole there. There's stuff called screen filler where you can fill in those dots. This is my screen filler, is the, this tape right here. I'm gonna use that. Let's see how easy it is to do this. I'm gonna use parts of the matting board as squeegees, since I don't have a proper squeegee. I'll get one of those in the future. Oops. All right. Now I want to flood the screen before I do this. Okay. And push up. Perfect. You guys ready for the first print? I am. Now that looks worlds better than the last one we did together. I'm pleased about that. Here's where I didn't think the plan through. Just gonna have to eyeball it. We're gonna we're gonna have some interesting results today. Huh! No shit. Bad. Didn't need to do it twice. Won't do it twice again. <laughs> I really like that look. It's looking a little thick now. Um, I guess I'll learn how to prevent that in the future. I did it! <laughs> It's pretty cool. I could probably make letterhead like this. That'd be really cool. Hey. 
it's my soda cat. When it dries, I want to see if I can do watercolor, how that would look. Kind of like paint by the numbers type thing. Well, friends, after uh, a week of trying and about four failed attempts, we have finally done what we have set out to do, which is to uh, paint a background color and then screen print an image over it. This wouldn't have been possible without you, Patreon pals. So thank you all. I'm going to go wash off my screen now. It's going to be fun when these dry. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm very excited about the outcome here. Um, if you have any questions that you think I can answer about this process, just ask them in the comments. Or, uh, shoot me a message on Patreon and I'd be overjoyed to share what I've learned. Goodbye friends.